Bob. Okay. Um, here are my disclosures. Uh, so we're going to go quickly through the history of fecal transplant. It's actually been around for quite a long time, dating back to the fourth century in China, and there were reports of using a, a human fecal suspension by mouth for diarrhea related to food poisoning. Described in 17th century veterinary medicine, something called transplantation, where you transferred uh, cecal contents or fresh feces from healthy horses to treat horses that had uh, diarrhea. And there were actually reports in North Africa during World War II of German soldiers who were having dysentery uh, treating. They got this from the Bedouins, where they would ingest uh, fresh, warm camel feces. That sounds so good, doesn't it? Fresh, just fresh warm. So like, it's like rolls coming out of the oven or something like that. Um, and then uh, we had reports in 1958 of using a fecal enema for treatment of a pseudomembranous colitis caused by a micrococcus. And then finally reports of a fecal enema for C. diff infection in uh, 1983. And then of course in the last uh, 20 years or so we've had multiple re reports of using fecal transplant for, F uh, for uh, recurrent C. diff. So this was a meta-analysis, a systematic review published in 2013 in the Red Journal looking at the role or the efficacy of FMT for recurrent C. diff infection. There were 11 studies with 273 patients and each data point represents the um, odds ratio, or the, actually the resolution rate with 95% confidence intervals around that. And you can see that the pooled ratio, uh, rate at the bottom was 89%. So 89% success rate. And there was a trend that if you administered it through a lower GI route, you had a slightly higher resolution rate of 91% versus the upper GI route where it was 81%. And uh, many of you may remember this article from the New, e New England uh, a year and a half back. This was a randomized trial of FMT versus vancomycin versus vancomycin plus bowel lavage for recurrent C. diff infection. They had 43 patients. Initially, the plan was to uh, recruit 120 patients, 40 in each treatment arm. Primary endpoint was cure of C. diff infection without relapse within 10 weeks, and they did repeat C. diff tests at weeks 2, 3, 5, and 10. And what they found uh, in the interim analysis was that the patients that were receiving the uh, fecal transplant were doing so well that they terminated the study early. There was a huge difference. You can see in the figure that with the first infusion, there was an 81% success rate. And then when you combine the first and the second together, it was a 93% success rate compared to only 30% percent for vancomycin and 23 percent for uh, vancomycin with bowel lavage. There were no uh, serious adverse events. So here was a randomized trial showing the efficacy of FMT. Uh, we had a nice paper from Mass General looking at the cost effectiveness of FMT comparing metronidazole, oral vancomycin, fidaxomycin, and then FMT via a lower GI approach. They modeled two additional recurrences in the model, and the most cost-effective approach by far was FMT via colonoscopy. So the incremental cost-effectiveness ratio was $17,000 per quality-adjusted life year relative to oral vancomycin, and, and the unit of um, efficacy here is uh, generally anything less than $50,000 per quality adjusted life year is considered cost effective, and some would argue even higher uh, values would be cost effective. In order for fidaxomycin to be cost effective in this model, it would have to cost less than $1,300, and so uh, it was not cost effective. And then some of you may have just seen this recent JAMA article, uh, proof of concept that you could capsulize frozen FMT and then treat relapsing C. diff infection. So 20 patients with recurrent C. diff received capsulized frozen FMT from healthy volunteer donors. There was a 70% resolution of diarrhea after a single capsule-based FMT. And then if they took the non-responders and retreated them, the combined response rate was 90%. And the figure just shows the number of bowel movements per day at various time points. And you can see how it nicely uh, comes down over time. So th we have clear-cut. Uh, evidence that FMT works for recurrent uh, C. diff. Well, what about FMT for IBD? Uh, here's a case report of a, a physician in 1989 in Kansas City who had steroid refractory active severe colitis. 
uh, and the patient was having um, was was actually treated with uh, retention enemas with donor flora, and they were symptom free for six months, off medications, normal endoscopy, no acute inflammation. And there was also a report around the same time from Australia of a 45-year-old man with ulcerative colitis pancolitis, elevated LFTs, refractory to sulfasalazine, received FMT, became asymptomatic within days, and had no recurrence three months out. Uh, so then we had a, a case series from the same author from Australia looking at six patients, average age 25 to 53 years, two had left-sided, two had pancolitis. The disease duration was less than five years. Uh, given as retention enemas every five days, symptoms improved within one week, and all patients had complete reversal of symptoms by four months. So early data looking pretty encouraging. Then we had a systematic review come out in AP&T in 2012. Uh, they were able to identify 17 uh, citations of case series or case reports, and this was a mix of patients that were, where they were treating just for the IBD, and then a group of patients that had IBD but who had recurrent C. diff. So we'll talk about those two separate groups. Overall, when you combine those two groups, we had 41 patients. You can see the age range and the subtype breakdown. The duration of follow-up was very variable from as short as two weeks to as long as 13 years, long range in uh, disease duration. Uh, most reports had some type of donor screening protocol. Uh, so the 26 patients where they used FMT primarily to treat IBD, uh, there was 13 out of 17 were able to stop IBD medications within six weeks, 16 experienced symptom reduction and resolution within four months, and 15 experienced complete resolution within a year. And among 24 patients, 15 had no evidence of active disease anywhere from three to 36 months after FMT. So sounds pretty impressive. In the group, where they were using the FMT primarily to treat the C. diff infection, but they also had IBD. You can see that 12 out of 12 had resolution of their C. diff infection. 11 out of 12 had a marked reduction in complete resolution of diarrhea. Um, and it seemed as if the FMT resulted in an improved response to IBD uh, medications in six of the patients. So let's talk a little bit more about FMT in UC, because I think what's happening is now that we're seeing uh, more rigorous studies, done of this, uh, we're not seeing quite the same effect. In fact, there's, um, well, I'll show you the data. So here's a report of five patients with moderate to severe UC, refractory to standard therapy. They got three days of FMT via na nasojejunal tube and an enema. One patient had a clinical response by week 12. Two patients had no change, and two patients actually worsened. And, act, and interestingly, all patients developed fever and elevated CRP immediately after the FMT. So here's another report, recent report. Six patients with UC, refractory to standard therapy, FMT from the lower GI approach. All six had short-term improvement in the first two weeks. Four out of six, however, had increased stool frequency by day 30. There was no change in CRP or fecal calpro. None of the patients achieved remission. And then we have this systematic review uh, published by uh, Coleman and Rubin uh, in the Journal of Crohn's Colitis. This is available online early now. Uh, 18 studies, nine cohort studies, eight case reports, one RCT, total of 122 patients about 80 for UC and 40 for Crohn's. Overall response rate was only 22% in ulcerative colitis, 22% response rate. And in Crohn's disease, it was a 61% response rate. And you can see the, the pooled overall response rate was 36% uh, if you just restrict it to the cohort studies and threw out the case reports. And so it's safe, but the effectiveness was highly, highly variable. Uh, here's another systematic re review recently published. 31 studies in 133 IBD patients, 43% of whom had recurrent C. diff infection, resolution or reduction of symptoms in 80 patients, or 71%, but when an objective score was used, it was actually more like a 62% either partial or complete response. And the patients who didn't have C. diff did a little bit better at 69%, Endoscopic improvement was documented in 57%, but again, when an objective endoscopic score was 
used, it went down to 20%. So as more objectivity and reality is being infused into this area, the results are not nearly as glowing as they were initially described. And again, there's multiple reports in these uh, uh, case series of uh, fever and elevated CRP immediately after the FMT. And again, we're talking about FMT for IBD, not for recurrent C. diff. And then we had this uh, randomized trial from McMaster that was uh, presented at DDW earlier this year, prospective double-blind RCT, placebo-controlled, 53 active patients, all negative for C. diff. You can see the mix of drugs they were on, six weeks of once-weekly fecal uh, FMT delivered by retention enemas versus placebo enemas, and you can see there was no difference in remission rates at week six assessed by Mayo score, IBD Q score, and the EQ5D, which is a, another quality of life measure. There were no adverse events, so you can see there at the top the figure IBD Q score at week six, no difference, and then Mayo score at week six, no difference. So. You, it, this study has been criticized by some because it's a small sample size and a short duration, but there's not even a signal of a benefit in this study. Um, so let's talk about the, the scenario of the IBD patient with recurrent C. diff. And so uh, here we have a table uh, looking at um, a group of patients, 29 non-IBD and 14 IBD patients that were um, similar in some respects uh, in terms of rates of hospitalizations, interim antibiotics, uh, renal insufficiency. Um, there's no mention of IBD remission from FMT in this particular um, study. And then we have this other report of FMT for recurrent C. diff in patients who are immunosuppressed. And this included 80 patients who were immunosuppressed for a variety of reasons, but included 36 patients with IBD who were on immunosuppressants or biologics. The efficacy for re eradicating recurrent C. diff was 86% with the first FMT, and then when you combine that with the second FMT and the non-responders, the cure rate was 94%. There were serious adverse events in 15% within 12 weeks post-FMT, including two deaths. One of them was a witnessed aspiration while the patient was sedated for their colonoscopy. The SAE rate for the IBD patients was 11%, so that was similar to the overall rate. Uh, five of the IBD patients, or 14%, did have a disease flare after FMT, and three of the patients underwent colectomy. So again, the theme seems to be that it works for eradicating the recurrent C. diff, but maybe not effective for treating the IBD. Here's our Mayo experience that was uh, presented at a poster at ACG in 2013. At that time, we had 13 patients. Uh, who had, we, we had treated with FMT who happened to have IBD as well. And again, we weren't treating them for their IBD. We were treating for recurrent C. diff. You can see the median age and duration, uh, median of four C. diff episodes, median of five failed treatment reg regimens, and uh, you can see a variety of IBD drugs that were treated. The overall uh, response rate was 92% in terms of clinical improvement and overall well-being. Uh, the one patient who had no improvement was a C. diff positive patient, so they had failed their FMT. Six patients had complete resolution of symptoms. Six had partial resolution. The median time to resolution was two days, and that's been my observation. When this works for an IBD patient or any patient with recurrent C. diff, they, they can tell within a day or two that they feel better. And so I've had some patients say they could tell within an hour or two. So there, it, it can be a pretty dramatic uh, benefit. However, none of these patients stopped their IBD therapies. In fact, 46% of them required escalation of their IBD therapy at some point in follow-up because, again, you're treating their recurrent C. diff, but you're not treating their underlying IBD. So it's safe and effective for treating recurrent C. diff, but doesn't really a appear to improve uh, the course of IBD. So uh, to conclude, uh, FMT does appear to be highly effective in eradicating recurrent C. diff, in the subset of IBD patients with recurrent CDI, it also appears to be highly effective and reasonably safe, including in patients on immunomodulators and biologics, but it is far from certain that FMT itself will be effective for treatment of IBD in the absence of recurrent C. diff, and I think we need additional placebo-controlled uh, trials uh, to answer this. The one placebo-controlled trial that we do have right now has been negative. And um, I'll stop there. Thanks.